sends us his Savior Who suffered and died Laid down his life Wonderful And welcome to our uh, service this morning, our online service for North Camp Cove and Frimley Green Churches, otherwise known as Church on the Green. Um, welcome to worship with us today. And now I've been on holiday for a week, so this is a really short service. Well, it should be short because um, I haven't been here to do it. So uh, uh, <laughs> why am I here? How am I here? Well, there's a little bit of a previous preparation. 
Well, thank you for everyone that's been able to take part and contribute to this service. Um, it's been really good to, to pull uh, lots of people together from um, all three churches. Really exciting. Sandra, Denise and um, Alison from North Camp. I think we should start with prayer. So may I invite you to join me as we gather together today. Creator and loving God, we thank you that we can come together in your presence, that wherever we are and whatever our circumstances, your loving hand is upon us. May your spirit guide us through this time together. We thank you for the week that we have had, for the bank holiday weekend, for our changing world as we slowly emerge from lockdown, that we can see each other more fully and engage with one another in face-to-face -face fellowship more easily. Lord, we don't know what we have until we haven't got it. And being together physically is one of the things that we're really missing for those of us who haven't been able to return to services yet. As we plan and prepare, we ask that your guiding uh, hand be upon that and that we use the wisdom that you give us to move forward, to stay safe and to trust you. We pray for those who can't join us this morning, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, may they know that they are a part of our communion. May they know that they are part of the body of Christ, that we are interwoven, working together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, enjoy this service. We'll be talking about love. We'll be talking about being a part of the vine. Rachel's got a great, I forgot to thank Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for your contribution. Um, in fact, Rachel's contribution is so good, um, I haven't done a sermon to go with this because what she says is on the money. Um, that will please some of you, uh, will maybe displease others, but hopefully there'll be enough here to keep us going and to keep us together um, until we meet again for our next service, which will be on Zoom next week. Take care, enjoy the service, and I'll see you a bit later. Bye. The New Testament reading is from 1 John 4, 7 to 21, and it's entitled, God is Love. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love, not knowing God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his only son to be a, a toying sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit, and we have seen to do testify, and that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God, so that we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. 
for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in his love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have for him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Thanks be to God.
Dear Lord, we often ask for many things, but forget to praise and thank you for your many blessings. Please forgive us and accept these prayers we offer. Thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, that enables us to be redeemed. Thank you for all those saints who have gone before and with their faith and service have instilled in us courage, love and a will to persevere. Thank you for the Queen, whose steadfast faith and service has served our country so well. Thank you for all those who have stepped forward during this pandemic, ranging from scientists, doctors, nurses, to ordinary unsung heroes on the front line. Those who have volunteered in many aspects or just shown loving kindness to those in need. Thank you for our church community, supporting one another, often through new mediums of worship or just a friendly phone call or thoughtful prayer. Thank you for our world. Please help us to rectify many of the problems we now have to try and reverse climate change and realise that many have very little but are sometimes more content than we are. Thank you for these many blessings, Lord. Amen. This is a poem, God Makes the Difference. In all of our days, in so many wonderful, beautiful ways, the blessings he sends from his own loving hand are better than anything we could have planned. His love for his children is daily expressed. Like a father, he gives nothing less than his best. His gifts and his goodness fill life to the brim with a joy that could only be fashioned by him. Lord, you have given so much to me and to all of us. Give one thing more, a grateful heart. Thank you. John 15, one to eight, Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Hi everyone. This is my bedside lamp. It's not very exciting, but it is really useful. And I think it's pretty cool because you turn it on like this Why isn't it working? Hang on. Ah, I see the problem. I forgot to plug it in. Let's try that again. There we go. Perfect. Lamps don't work when we don't plug them in, when they're not connected to the power source. It's a bit like what Jesus said in our Bible reading today. Except he didn't talk about a lamp, he talked about a grapevine. Jesus used imagery that the people around him would have understood. Everyone would have known what a grapevine looked like. 
There was the vine, the branches, and then the grapes. The branches produce the grapes, but they can't do that if they're not attached to the vine. The vine gives the branches support and gives them water and the minerals they need for the fruit to grow. Jesus said that he is like the vine and we are like the branches. When we are connected to him, we can be kind and generous and share Jesus' love with others. Jesus told his friends this just before he was going to leave them, and he wanted all his friends, that includes you and me, to know that he would always be with them and support them, just like the vine sustains and nourishes the branches to produce fruit. We can all be connected to Jesus just as closely as the branches are connected to the vine. We can stay connected to Jesus by praying, reading the Bible and living our lives in the way that Jesus wants us to. If Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, that means we are all connected to Jesus. And if we are all connected to Jesus, then we are all connected to each other too. We can all produce good fruit or shine like a light, showing other people God's love. Just like these fairy lights. Each of them is connected to the power source, the battery pack. And because they're all connected to the power source, they're all connected to each other too. So, if we stay connected to Jesus and connected to each other, then we can shine brightly and bear good fruit and show everyone else God's amazing love. I speak words of wisdom inspired from above If I fathom the mysteries of life And my faith moves a mountain But I don't have love I'm as dead as a river run dry So I will remain in the love of my life Oh 
In God's true book, the Bible, Jesus uses pictures to tell us seven great things about himself, and they all start with the words, I am. Here is the last picture. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Have you ever seen a fruit tree? I once saw a tree that grew lemons. It was amazing. It was very colourful. When fruit grows on trees, it makes people happy, especially the gardener. Good fruit makes the gardener very happy. Now, what does a gardener do? It is the person that cares about the tree. They water it and make sure the tree gets enough light and they cut off bits of the tree that aren't good so that the good bits keep on growing. And what happens when a branch falls off that tree? Does it still grow leaves and fruit? No, of course it doesn't. But why? Why don't branches that have broken away from the tree keep growing leaves and fruit? Because they are not part of the tree anymore. Branches need to stay part of the tree to enjoy being alive. Otherwise, they just end up rotting on the ground. Here is what Jesus means. If we say sorry to God for the wrong things we have done and choose to follow Jesus, and that, that means that we listen to his words and choose to do the right things just like Jesus did, then God will make us more and more like Jesus. Now that is great news. Jesus is saying he is like the trunk of the tree and we are the branches. If we break off from the tree, then we can't produce fruit anymore. Isn't Jesus amazing? He is the one that gives us life and helps us to grow fruit. But what does Jesus mean by fruit? In another part of God's true book, we can find a list of the good things that grow in us that make God, our gardener, happy. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the things that make God happy. So, what have we seen? Jesus says he is like the trunk of a tree, and when we follow him, we are like his branches. When we are connected to Jesus, it's like the fruit begins to grow, fruit that makes the gardener happy. If the gardener finds branches that are not producing fruit, then he cuts them off, so the whole tree gets better and better. Jesus is like a tree, and we are like the branches that produce good fruit. Now here is an idea for you to do at home. See if you can think of nine different fruits. Then why not draw them and cut them out? And then you can write on each one, one of these words, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When you are done, you can color them in and then stick them up in the same place that you go to bed. And then each day when you wake up, you can remember that God is growing these things in you. Don't we have a wonderful God who makes us more and more like Jesus. Please join me in our prayer of confession. We have not always lived in ways that reflect God's love for all. There are times when prejudice and ignorance have caused us to judge others as less important, less capable, less whole than ourselves. Gracious God, release us and grant us mercy. 
We have not always lived as people assured of our place in God's heart. There are times when despair has been our refuge and we have turned from God's promises. Gracious God, release us and grant us hope. We have not always lived as disciples of Jesus. There are times when the paths to wealth and power have been far more attractive than the longer roads of justice, peace and tolerance. Gracious God, release us and grant us courage. We have not always lived as a people of the resurrection. There are times when we have only seen the world as a place of threat and brokenness, forgetting God's creative genius. Gracious God, release us and grant us wisdom. In quietness, we remember those thoughts, actions and words that have marred your image in us, hurt others and damaged the world. God has heard the confession of our hearts and minds. In Christ we are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. The seasons come and the seasons go. When I woke up on this spring morning, there was a light covering of snow. Yet just a couple of weeks ago, it was the hottest day of the year. A wonderful reminder that the summer season was drawing near. How often the seasons merge together seemingly without any rhyme or reason. Yet our Lord Jesus Christ remains ever constant, his love and light radiating whatever the season. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you to everyone that's taken part. Um, may you enjoy the week ahead, wherever you are, whatever you are doing. If you're going to school, I hope it goes well. If you're going to work, I hope that goes well. If you're at home, you don't know what you're doing next, I hope that goes well too. Wherever we are, whatever we do, may we be led by the Spirit of God. May we trust him and share the love that, you, that God has so willingly given us. We are a blessed people. It's not always easy to recognise being loved, but we can trust God, believe the promises and move forward. Have a good week. Bye now.
said this 